So I think since we only have 18 minutes left, we will table the questions until tomorrow, and we will have the lecture. Because this one, if you don't have the lecture, you could be in deep trouble. Most tech, what I'm going to teach you now, most textbooks don't have it in there, but it's super important. Okay, now last chapter, remember when you have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, how many roots are there? There's two roots, and what did we learn last? If I add the two roots together, you always get negative b over a. If I multiply the two roots together, you will always get c over a. Is there something like that for like higher degree polynomial equations? Yeah. Yes. So let's take a look at them. Hopefully you can see the pattern. If you have a cubic equation, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, how many roots are there? Three. If I add the three roots together, you will always get <coughs> negative b over a. It's in your notes. Hey, that's the same as this one. If I multiply the roots together two at a time, like this, r1 times r2, and then r1 times r3 times r2 times r3, you will always get c over a. If I multiply the roots together three at a time, but there's only three, r1 times r2 times r3, you will always get negative b over a. You guys see it, the pattern? Okay, let's move on. I think when we get to the fourth power, then you'll see it. Okay, suppose we have a fourth degree polynomial. ax to the fourth plus bx to the three plus cx to the two plus dx plus e equals zero. How many roots does this equation have? Four. If I add them together, you will always get negative b over a. Oh, so Mr. Park, it doesn't matter what degree polynomial I have, if I add the roots together, it's always negative b over a. Yep. If I multiply them together two at a time, r1 times r2, r1 times r3, R1 times, you guys don't have to write this down, it's all in the notes. That's R2 times R3, I think I run this R3 times R4, plus R3 times R4, you will always get C over A. If I multiply the roots three at a time and then add them together, R1, R2, R3, R1, R2, R4, R1, R3, R4, R2, R3, R4. Did I catch them all? Yes, I'm the teacher. You will always get negative D over A. And then if I multiply them together four at a time, but then they only there's only four roots, R1 times R2 times R3. Why am I writing this when it's in your notes? You will always get E over A. I think you see the pattern now. Oh, so how can you use this to help you solve problems? Okay, well here we go. What if I ask you to write me a polynomial equation of lowest degree whose roots are 2, 3, and 4, say? So write me a cubic polynomial equation whose roots are 2, 3, and 4. What would you do? Okay, you would go x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4 equals 0. Oh, that's so easy, Mr. Park. Okay, now what, write your answer in descending order. In other words, multiply it all out. Okay, let's just... So x minus 2 first, and then you multiply these two together first. So what is that? x squared minus 7x plus 12. And then you... Distributed, so take the first term and distribute it. 
x cubed minus 7 x squared plus 12 x. And then take this term and distribute it. Negative 2 x squared plus 14 x minus 24 equals 0. Add them up. x cubed minus 9 x squared plus 26 x minus 24 equals 0. Nah, that's not that bad. No, it's not really that bad. But then what happens when you get like 4 or 5 roots, 6 roots even? Is there a faster way? Yeah, what we just learned. Okay, here are the three roots. If I add the three roots together, you will always get negative b over a. So what is 2 plus 3 plus 4? 9. If I multiply them 2 at a time, you're going to get c over a. So try multiplying them 2 at a time. 2 plus 3. I mean 2 times 3. 2 times 4. 3 times 4. And that's equal to? 26. And then... Negative d over a is equal to multiplying of 3 at a time. So multiply all 3. 2 times 3 times 4. 24. So since they're all whole numbers, probably a good idea is to let a equal 1, right? If a is equal to 1, what is b? No, negative 9. Negative 9. Oh, right there. What if a is 1? What is c? 26. And if a is 1, what is b? Negative 24. Get the exact same answer, except way faster. Okay, now, the way I pair it. So that's the normal way of doing it here, but watch what I do. This is what I do. Which is using the same principle, except I'm just assuming A is 1 already to make it easier. So if I want the roots to be 2, 3, and 4, what goes in this box? The sum of the roots. 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. What goes in this box? You multiply the roots 2 at a time. 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 3 times 4, 26. What goes in that box? You multiply them. 2 times 3 times 4, 24, finished. Isn't that a lot faster? OK. Let's look at another example. You guys think you're good now, huh? Write me a polynomial equation with integer coefficients so that its roots are 2 and 1 minus radical 3. Okay, what is the degree of this polynomial going to be? Two. No. If you're going to have integer coefficients, okay, okay, come on. Think about the quadratic formula. If 1 minus radical 3 is a root, what, what else has to be a root? 1 plus, one plus radical 3. Why? Plus minus. Yeah, because that's the only way you can get integer coefficients, right? Also, we, now we have three roots. So watch what I do. What goes in here? The sum of the roots. What is this plus this plus this? Four. What goes in here? Multiplying them two at a time. So multiply these two. Two minus two root three. Multiply these two. Two plus two root three. Multiply these two. One minus three is negative two. Add them up. Two. See how the radical three cancel out? Will they always cancel out? Yes. How else are you going to get integer coefficients? And then what goes in this last box over here? The product of the roots. This times this times this. Well, we already know these two have multiplied to negative 2. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Boom, there's your answer. Now, if you don't use this technique, then this is what you have to do. If these are the three roots, then your equation is x minus 2 times x minus this <laughs> times x minus this. <laughs> okay, now multiply it all out. <laughs> and you have all kinds of radicals in there. But you know what? You're going to come out to the same answer because all the radical stuff is going to cancel out. Okay, let's do another example. Write me a polynomial equation with integer coefficients whose roots are 3 and 2 plus i root 5. Oh, I just gave it away already. If 2 plus i root 5 is a root, what else has to be a root? Okay, 2 minus i root 5. So we're talking about a third degree polynomial, right? So watch what I use. So I'm just, I'm just assuming a is 1. Uh, Mr. Park, how come it goes plus, minus, plus, minus? Because wasn't that the pattern? Remember? Negative b over a, then positive c over a. Then negative d over a, then positive e over a. That's the pattern. That's why. 
Okay, now watch what I do to save time. What goes in here? The sum of the roots. What is this plus this plus this? Seven. Everybody can add, right? What goes in this? Multiply them two at a time. So if you want to think about it as one at a time, two at a time, three at a time, maybe you can do that. So watch this. Multiply these two. Six. Multiply these two. Six. Multiply these two. Four plus five, nine. So what is that? Twenty-one. Yo, Mr. Park, wait, wait, you multiply these two, shouldn't you have plus 3i root 5? And then when you multiply these two, shouldn't you have minus 3i root 5? Yeah, but aren't they going to cancel? Anything with an i or a radical is going to cancel, because that's the only way you're going to get integer coefficients. So if you know they're going to cancel, why even write it? And then do you see how I got this? You guys remember the i squared is negative 1, right? And the boom, there you go. So, what happened? Multiply these two, you get 9, 9 times 3, 27. Now we're finished. Are we, are we getting the hang of it? You just gotta practice this. Okay, now let's do four roots. <laughs> Write me a polynomial equation with integer coefficients whose roots are, hey, let's, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make it simple. Now, do you wanna go x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 4 and multiply it all up? No. So, shall we use the method that we just learned? Okay, so we know it's going to be fourth power, and then we follow the pattern where we're assuming a is equal to 1. Okay, so what goes in the first one? The sum of the roots. What is this plus this plus this plus this? This one, you multiply them two at a time. 1 times 2. 1 times 3. 1 times 4. 2 times 3. 2 times 4. 3 times 4. Add them up. 35. 35. 20 plus 10 plus 5 is 35. Okay, what goes in here? You multiply it 3 at a time. So 1 times 2 times 3. 1 times 2 times 4. 1 times 3 times 4. 2 times 3 times 4. Add them up. Okay, when I add, this is what I do. I add these, like a group of, oh, that's 30. Oh, that's 20. 30 plus 20 is? But obviously, you're going like this, 6 plus 8 is 14, 14 plus 12 is 26, and then i got to gotta carry, so I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> and then the last one is you multiply them 4 at a time. What is that times that times that times that? 24, and there's your answer. Wait, you think you're good? Yeah. <laughs> okay, write me a polynomial equation whose roots are 2 plus root 3, and, and, Make up a number. 1 minus, no, 1 minus 2i. Two, two so what is the degree of this polynomial going to be? 4. Four. So if 2 plus root 3 is a root, 2 minus root 3 has to be a root. And if you two minus two I, 1 minus 2i is a root, 1 plus 2i is a root. So anytime you have a radical or an imaginary, you, the conjugate has to be a root as well. Yeah. Okay, now think. What would be the fastest way to do this problem? To do the method I just did? Or go x minus this times x minus that times x minus that times x minus that and multiply it all out? Or do you think there's a faster way? What is it? Just from the tone of my voice, this is faster. <laughs> okay, let's just try it using the method I did. x to the fourth by the little dot squared plus, oh, q, fool. But something x squared by something x plus something equals zero. Okay, what goes in here? The sum of the roots. What is this plus this plus this plus this? Six. Right. Because all the radical threes and all the i's are always going to cancel out. They all, how else are you going to get integer coefficients? Okay, now, here, here comes the hard part. Now we've got to multiply them two at a time. This times this. Oh my gosh. One. Okay, now this times this. Oh, trouble! Big number. Trouble! Okay, so it's trouble, okay? Actually, I can do it fast. There, you want me to do it? Okay. Two. Because <laughs> all the other stuff has radicals and i's in it. They're going to cancel out. How else are you going to have integer coefficients? All the other stuff has to cancel out. You don't believe me. <laughs> so just multiply the stuff that's not going to cancel out. So what happens when you multiply this times this? You're just going to get another 2. Oh, I forgot this one. Then. That's 2 also. 
Okay, now multiply this and this. Two. But wait, where's the first one? One. one. Why is there a two there? Okay, one, two, 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 and then what's that? Multiply these two. No. Five. I squared is negative one. Five. 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 Okay, now add them together. Yeah, 14. Can you guys do that? Okay, so obviously not. So you know what you can do? Um, this is, there's nothing wrong with this, okay, but is there a better way? Oh, well, I don't know if it's better or not. How about make a quadratic where these are the two roots, and make a quadratic where these are the two roots, and then multiply the two quadratics together? You guys ever thought of that? Like this, make a quadratic for these two. Whoa. Whoa. And then make a quadratic for these two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Again, we're assuming A is 1. What goes in is The sum of the roots. What's, what's the sum of the roots? What's the product? One. one. Okay. What's the sum of these two roots? One plus one. Two, people. And then you multiply them. Five. And then just multiply those two together. Which way do you like better? And then what happens now when you have five roots? <coughs> Challenge. <laughs> so actually, I wanted to do one more example, but bell's going to ring already. So tonight's homework is probably the most challenging of the homeworks because if you don't know the negative b over a, c over a stuff, it's all over the prime. And I remember last chapter. Remember those that last that last problem on the test. A lot of you struggled with that negative b over a thing, but. There's going to be lots of problems that involve that. Yes. I can, I can do it as many as I need to. How fast can you do it? Oh, you want to race me? You should leave away for a shit. So tomorrow, put all the questions on the board. Polly, whatever. What, is, what are we doing now, Polly? <laughs> Bye-bye.